In this video I'm going to talk about problem number 12 on the integration review packet. Uh, and I'll talk about it the way that made sense to me first, which is uh, has the calculus ideas in it, but it's not necessarily solved using uh, traditional integration. And then after that I'll go through how we would solve it using integration. And as always with a word problem, one of the first things that you have to be able to do is to decode the important information that's in the problem. And looking back, probably the first most important piece of information that we have is that we're dealing with constant deceleration. And because we're dealing with constant deceleration, that means that we have a velocity that has a constant slope. So I can draw a graph something like this. So even though I'm dealing with acceleration, um, I'm going to make a graph of velocity because the area under the velocity curve gives me distance traveled. Now, But again, in order to start this problem off, one of the first things that I have to do is that I'm going to have to convert all of those miles per hour into feet. And I'm going to convert them to feet per second only because the feet per second will give me the smallest possible numbers. The time is not really important in this problem. Nowhere in there in here does it require that the answer has to be in seconds, minutes, or hours. So we'll see how we go about making that conversion and then why it's okay for it to be in feet per second. So 45 miles per hour times 5280 feet per mile and that gives me 237,600 feet per hour. Um, but we're going to convert that to seconds. I'll just move that over here so it's easier to work with. And we multiply that times uh, 1 over 3600 hours per second. And that gives us 66 feet per second. So the 45 miles per hour translates into 66 feet per second. And we can do the same thing with the 30. And so there, 30 miles per hour times 5,280 feet per mile gives 158,400 feet per hour. And that all yields 44 feet per second. All right, so what we're working with is uh, 66 feet per second and 44 feet per second for the two rates that were given. Now we're not told at what we're not told anything about the time at what time it starts, etc. Um, we're not given any particular time values. So it's okay in this particular instance to go ahead and use uh, to assume that at time t sub 0 or at the time equal to 0 that we're traveling at 66 feet per second. So that would be the first data point and that would be the y-intercept in this particular case. Now the problem would work even if you didn't assume that that was the y-intercept. If that was moved into the right and you had some other point as your y-intercept, it would still work. But this is going to make it a little bit simpler. And at some time uh, after that, we'll call that uh, time A seconds, we're traveling at 44 uh, feet per second. So we go from 45 miles an hour to 30 miles per hour, or 66 feet per second to 44 feet per second. We don't know how much time that takes, but we do know that we cover a distance of 264 feet and that there is a constant deceleration. So we know that the area under that section of the curve from a equals zero, uh, t equals 0 to t equals a has to have an area, has to be an area of 264 feet because that's the distance traveled between those two times. And so what we're working with here is a trapezoid and so we'll use the formula for the area of a trapezoid and that is the height over 2 times the uh, sum of the bases. Again the height is the perpendicular distance between the two parallel bases. And in this case it's the height that is unknown. But we do know that the sum of the bases is 110 which we're going to divide by 2, which is 55. And so we know that 55h has to equal 264. And so the height, or the distance between time t equals 0 to t equals a, is 264 over 55. 